So after the fiducial markers are placed, now we are gonna do the space ore. So remember what I said before, for fiducial markers, you wanna compress the gland a little bit. So you're gonna, you, you would have had put the arm up or the stepper up to compress the gland during the fiducial markers. That way the gland is held firmly in place. For these though, you wanna go down, you wanna decompress the gland a little bit. And the reason being, because we want the space, if you can picture the rectum will be here on a real patient, you want the space between the prostate and the rectum to open because that's where they're aiming the space ore for. And the whole idea of space ore is it's basically a gel that once they inject it, it's going to expand the space between the rectum and the prostate and in essence, push the prostate away from the rectum. And you'll actually see when it's deployed, there'll be a big amount of hardened kind of gelatinous material here and that'll create a cushion for the prostate. So that way, once they're radiating the prostate, the rectum won't be exposed to radiation. Um, and so already it's been shown to really reduce the side effects um, of radiation, which the biggest one is called uh, colonic toxicity or radiation of the prostate um, that's causing the colon to be hit by radiation, um, which is not good. It, it ends up in a bad quality of life for the patient. Um, so they do everything they can to avoid that happening. Um, for the space or procedure, we already mentioned we're going to go down on the probe to decompress the gland. You don't want to decompress so much that you lose the image. And if that happens, you'll see there'll be a big black shadow because you're not making good contact with the crystal. Um, so you want to come up until you see the image, but don't come up too much that so you're over compressing it uh, because that makes that space really tight to get into. Um, so what they're aiming for, and they're going to come in on sagittal view initially, um, is this area here. So mid gland midline you can see the urethra right between the prostate and the rectum they don't want to be in the prostate and they don't want to be in the rectum they want to be between it if they go into the rectum that's not good because that's not going to cause that gel to spread if they go into the prostate same thing the gel won't spread properly so i'll show you they're going to do certain checks to make sure they're not in either one um, but that's their target right here is right at mid gland midline uh, with the needle before they inject the space or gel. So what they'll have you do is start on sagittal. They're gonna step out to the perineum. So remember the perineum is over here. This is the apex. So the perineum is this part of the patient here. So they wanna see the needle coming in. You know, same thing about two, about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half above the probe. They're gonna go midline on this one and they're gonna come in. And if they don't see the needle, they can turn the probe to visualize that needle. See the white needle? So again, this is tough with one hand, but the stepper makes it a lot easier. They can turn the probe until they see the needle. They wanna come in basically on this trajectory. And it's tough to see with this big shadow here, but basically they wanna come in with the needle coming down like this. So if you can picture the needle coming in on the screen, there'll be a white needle coming in. They wanna get down below the apex and basically thread the needle into the mid gland. And they're gonna to try to keep the needle bevel in view the whole time. So the bevel of a needle is the tip of it. And they want the bevel down. So the you'll hear the space or rep telling them have the bevel down so that they're able to see that point better. Um, so they'll turn the needle or turn the probe to be able to see the bevel and keep it in view the whole time. So they're going to come in. You know, you can see the needle here. And as they come in, they're going to follow the needle with the probe. So they're going to step in, follow it in and aim for that mid gland, midline area. So you can see here, they're a little too far, so they're gonna pull the needle back. And once they get there, you can see that nice artifact again with the needle that shows us we're right under the crystal. They wanna see that tip of the bevel though. So see that tip, how it makes that angled shape? That's what they wanna see is the bevel. So you can see I'm way over the base right now, so they come back with the needle and then they can turn it. They can either turn the needle left and right over the crystal to see it, or they can rotate the probe left and right, 
one or the other. You can't do both at the same time. Um, so they always want to make sure that see as I turn the needle, it's going to stay in view. If you turn the probe, same thing would happen. Like whenever that crystal is under the needle, you'll see it a lot better. So they're going to pull back to the mid gland area. And this is where the space oil reps will have them do certain checks. So they're going to have them wiggle the needle. They're going to see if they're pulling the rectum at all. They're going to see if they're pulling the gland. If they're in the gland, if they're in the rectum, they're going to, if they are, they're going to have them adjust, either pull back and then come up or come down, depending on which one they're in and just try to help navigate them into that space in between the gland and the rectum. And you'll see them mention there'll be like a white line, which is like a uh, perirectal fat line border. That's kind of like a target for them to hit. They want to kind of be in that area. So they're going to just confirm they're in the right space. And same thing they're going to do on, that they did on fiducial, they're going to do it here. They're going to have you switch to axial they're going to come back. So remember, we're already centered over under the needle, so you don't have to spin the probe at all. Just come back, and you should still be centered underneath it. But for this part, they want to center the gland to the probe. Because remember, they want to make sure that we're putting this gel midline. So once they center the gland to the probe, basically making the gland over the probe, they can wiggle the needle. You can see the needle's a little bit off. It was over here at first. So say they wiggle it and they're off, they can redirect it midline. And remember, they wanna be midline on the gland because you want the gel to spread equidistant to both sides of the gland. If you're over here, the gel's not gonna to spread to this side. So that side will get radiated you know, into the rectum. So you want it to spread evenly. So they're gonna make sure that they initially get the needle midline at the mid gland portion of the gland and again, they're on here, they're going to move the needle. They're going to see if they're pulling the prostate at all. If they are, they can pull back and go down into the space. If they're in the rectum, they can pull back and go up back into that space, move the needle, wiggle it, make sure that it's in the right location. And then what they'll also do is they'll hook up a syringe of saline and they'll inject some saline. And you'll actually see the saline flowing in this area. You'll see black fluid and they're looking to see, does it go equidistantly? Does it separate that area enough? If it only goes to one side, sometimes they'll have you decompress the gland a little bit. Again, I said, if that's too tight, it won't spread evenly. So they may have you come down on the probe to separate that space a little more. They'll inject more saline, see if it spreads better. Um, sometimes what they'll do is they'll actually, if you know they reduce compression, but it's still not spreading evenly, they may actually move the needle slightly to the side that it's not spreading to. Uh, that way, hopefully, it'll get some more on that side and spread evenly then. So this at this part, the space oil rep is really the one guiding the urologist on how to move the needle, what to check, injecting saline, and you're just basically switching the view for them, and they're going to step in and step out, or you'll help them step in and step out with either the stepper or the Artemis. So remember, same concept. If you switch the sagittal, you have to step in. You have to bring the probe in pushing it into the patient's rectum. And then you'll see the gland better. And then when you step out, you're gonna be on axial, you step out, because remember, you have to move that crystal under the needle again. So we have to come back until you see the needle at mid-gland. So again, when they go sagittal, you step in, axial, step out. So they're gonna do multiple checks on both views. You just follow what they're directing you to do, switching the views. If you're helping them to move the probe in and out, angling the probe to see the needle. Again, you wanna have the gland centered on transverse because they have to kind of gauge where the center is of the gland so they can move the needle appropriately. So at that point, once they're in the right spot and they confirm they're not in the rectum, they're not in the prostate, they'll usually go back to sagittal to deploy the gel. So you'll step in again. The needle should be midline, mid gland. So you should see urethra and you should see the needle bevel really clear. And they're gonna hook up the space or kit. So at, at this time they build the kit and you'll see them building it with the space or rep. It's a combination of two syringes and a Y connector um, and the two syringes, basically when they join 
the fluids in the Y connector, it turns into that gel. Uh, so the thing about Spaceor is you get, you get kind of one shot to put it in. If you don't put it in the right spot, it's a waste. And 